to the day three of our allyship journey. Today we will talk about the words, because language is a way that the power structure is conveyed. Words matter, they actually shape our world. First, most of our languages are actually androcentric. They consider masculine as universal. We can see that in different expressions like mankind, manpower, and different professions that are already associated with the gender. Look at some expressions like, hey guys, when we address a group of mixed people or sometimes even women. Even if people do not mean it, as women, we are not even included in the words that describe the reality. We are completely erased from it. This is really deep into our psyches and our way of understanding the world. There is a, a new trend towards inclusive writing, but it is still a minority. In Spanish, French, the presence of only one male person in the group transforms the whole collective in masculine. At language level, masculine overpowers feminine. And beyond this, think about so many sexist expressions running in our language. Don't be a pussy, run like a girl, hysterical, feminazi, and so on. Language shapes our world. Most of it comes from our sexist, racist, and homophobic worldview. Saying that somebody is black sheep is just an example of how racism is so subtly built into the English language that most of us don't notice. Yet the outcast is not the white sheep. Everyday language reminds black people that their color is related to extortion, black male, disrepute, black mark, rejection, black ball, banishment, black list, impurity, not the driven snow, illicitness, black market, and death. Then we have the power of the jokes, making fun of overweight people, people with disabilities, people who are deemed different from the norm and all the insults that attach value and courage to men and make assumptions on the sexuality of your mother as women. The accent is also a way to classify you between urban and rural, well-educated and less educated, wealthy or less wealthy social class. On TV, only what is considered standard accent is allowed. Your language level is also a way to identify which social class you belong to. In some cases, it is even forbidden to speak your native language, as was the case for Catalans, for example, during the 40 years of Spanish dictatorship, or the Mapuches who do not teach their language to their kids so that they are not discriminated socially. The words we use when reporting news also matter. Domestic homicides are often portrayed as kind men who just snapped or crimes of passion. Victims of sexual assault are alleging or claiming facts instead of reporting, implying there is a doubt in their testimonials. Finally, the use of the speaking space and time is also a demonstration of power. A dominant individual often talks confidently and assertively and tends to give orders and instructions. Their voice is self-assured and they won't hesitate to raise it if doing so will help them get their own way. Their physical stance and body language is also very assertive and suggests that the space belongs to them. In public transportation, this is called manspreading. People from the dominant group tend to have an assertive body language with open shoulders, stand taller, look at people in the eyes. Those who have a dominant personality tend to impose their point of view, which they consider to be the most relevant on others. Because of this, they can't handle criticism. They tend to either turn on the charm to gain support for their vision or use intimidating behaviors such as threats, guilt trips, mood swings, or humiliation. People with power and privilege tend to express it through their voice. Either making noise when they arrive somewhere so that people note their presence, or speaking louder Interrupting others, what is called man-interrupting, finishing the phrases of others, occupying the speaking stage in meetings and groups, speaking non-stop without a pause so that they are not interrupted, monopolizing the conversation with their topics, 
explaining others what they probably already know or mansplaining, calling others with condescending names, sweetie, cariño, not listening, appropriating others' ideas, shouting, insulting, throwing things, slamming doors, etc., etc. The words are also in favor of the extrovert's personality. In her book, Quiet, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking, Susan Cain explains how the leadership model in many organizations is unconsciously in favor of the extrovert type of personality. At least one third of the people we know are introverts. They are the ones who prefer listening to speaking, who innovate and create but dislike self-promotion, who favor working on their own over working in teams. In Quiet, Susan Cain argues that we dramatically undervalue introverts and shows how much we lose in doing so. She charts the rise of the extrovert ideal throughout the 20th century and explores how deeply it has come to permeate our culture. What do we do in our teams to listen to the introverts? To conclude, the ultimate way to maintain the system of oppression is actually the absence of words. The fact that we are silent when there is abuse of power, when somebody is making a classist joke, when a colleague is interrupting another one, when somebody is making an appropriate comment and at the dinner table, only perpetuates the current oppression. As an exercise today, I invite you to a living experiment. Whenever you are in a group, would it be at work or talking with some friends or at dinner, just note who is speaking. Try to monitor the speaking time, the different interventions, the frequency, the interruptions, who is invading and who is retreating. And at the end, voice your stats. Make people realize and think about what is going on. Another journaling exercise for today is to see how you want to cha challenge your own language. Which expressions, which words do you want to stop using? It can be insults or just the way of speaking, but which is the commitment you're taking to try to have a more inclusive language? Good luck. <laughs>